Hello, I'm Solenko. I'm working at uh, Bordeaux Lab, Laboratory PASEA, and um, I'm a specialist of LASIK, uh, LASIK industry studies. Uh, my specificity is to cross techno-economical approach and the uh, petroarchaeological approach. And uh, I'm working as on a more uh, early, early upper paleolithic. And uh, I'm also working with the Erwan Vessier there, who is doing uh, now his PhD on the middle paleolithic with the same specificity to cross uh, petroarchaeological and uh, techno-economical approach. So that's the occasion to, to present you this uh, this question about the, the correlation or the difference between the Middle and Upper Paleolithic questioning the provisioning territory. So first, uh, of course, the transition between Middle and, Paleo and the Upper Paleolithic was um, uh, full of uh, presupposition because it's, uh, the Upper Paleolithic was defined in the, co in the comparison with the Middle one. And um, quickly, we have three persistent presuppositions. First, concerning provisioning territories that are for Middle Paleolithic, more local to regional with uh, uh, some uh, distance of provisioning about uh, 50 kilometers. That's the, the best, more or less, we have. Um, and uh, by differ differences, during the Upper Paleolithic, it's very, very common to have far distance of provisioning up to 200 kilometers. And second one, it's um, uh, the steps of the chain opératoire realized in each raw material are correlated with the distance between the point of collect and the archaeological sites. So, uh, of course, we have this idea that the, uh, the first raw material will be represented on archaeological site by the last step of the chain opératoire, and mainly for the upper paleolithic, the tool and blades. And the third presupposition it's uh, about typological and um, Typological area and the provisioning territory, and um, most of the time we think that typological, uh, typo technological comparison that interregional grade defined the typological area. So just if we uh, spot on the on the map all the site with uh, um, this uh, this techno complex, we have this typo technological area, and um, we we all always have this uh, this idea that for each site, if we if we make petroarchaeological uh, study intra site just for one site. We have this uh, provisioning territory who is contained by the big typological area. And actually, that's not just presupposition because it's uh, more based on a lot of observation on uh, some sites. Uh, that's the typical uh, example of Congonal for the Middle Paleolithic. That's uh, um, well here in the, in the lots and um, the the level uh, uh, 2930 le, uh, deliver the valuolithic techno complex material and uh, that's uh, that's techno complex is typical from the southwestern france there in blue it's the the typological area of this techno complex and uh, and what we see it's uh, that uh, that's uh, true for these levels that we have a, a provisioning area that's not up that um, 50 kilometers so that fits with all the presupposition we have and another very typical example for the for the Upper Paleolithic uh, Abri Pateau in Dordogne here, and uh, we have this uh, uh, provisioning area is uh, from the uh, all the Aquitan Basin and up to the Parisian Basin with the Grand Presigny, and um, and so up to uh, two uh, hundred kilometers. And uh, and also yes, um, this uh, so Pateau sorry it's a uh, later recognition. Uh, typical with um, uh, blade production and bladeless production, and the bladeless production are in a typical curve behind Busquet that are well known in all the all the Western Europe, and uh, the um, t twisted bladelets, like work the bladelets, and other twisted bladelets are well known on not only Europe but also uh, up to the Levant. So that's uh, okay. Of course, this uh, 200 kilometers at Pateau, actually, it's uh, it's nothing uh, if we compare with the huge um, uh, typological area of the twi twisted bladelets. But uh, in this presentation, we would like to uh, to question this presupposition and actually um, see with you if you could uh, if we could give new results. Uh, with our specificity that I say it's uh, really to cross uh, typo uh, technological and techno-economical approach and petroarchaeological approaches. And uh, if we have new results, how we will interpret that? And uh, to question this, uh, this, uh, this uh, to address this question, sorry, uh, we present three cases uh, for the Middle Paleolithic Bone Valley. 
and uh, for the Upper Paleolithic, Pato and Le Pigeonnier. So Bomb Valley, it's uh, here in uh, the Massif Central, and uh, it's a middle Paleolithic site uh, with uh, recurrent napping, mostly Le Valois, and uh, actually uh, this, uh, this um, LTC, this uh, Lithic Techno Complex, is uh, most well known in the southeastern part of, uh, of France. And uh, what we see, if we, uh, if, we, um, regard, if we look to the raw material provisioning, it's uh, we have, of course, uh, some uh, local to some local uh, raw material, but also this incredible, um, incredible result with uh, some raw material that's coming from up to three, uh, 350 kilometers. So that's huge for the middle paleolithic that not at all f that that don't fit at all with this presupposition that we have very local um, local provisioning for this uh, this techno complex. And um, if we look closer, not just the, the provisioning area, but really if we cross petroecological uh, and techno-economical study, um, we, could, uh, we could think that we will have uh, the last step of the chain operator we present on site for this, uh, this material, but actually not at all, because uh, we have all the exploitation, production, and retention phases for this raw material uh, for here, Grand Pessigny or Turonien de la Vallée du Cher, here on site. So uh, that's a second uh, incredible result because that don't fit at all with the, the presupposition. And for the Upper Paleolithic uh, Abri Pateau, so I, I already present the site, but if now we cross uh, petroecological and techno-economical results, we also have something that don't fit with the, the presupposition about the uh, representation of the step of the chain opératoire. Because we have here Grand de Mille and Bergeracroix that are very well represented, uh, not on site. Of course, the acquisition is non local, but we have all the, the chain operator for blade production and blade led production. And actually, uh, I don't represent air, the, this, but we, we have here also uh, other raw material that could have been used, but they don't, they didn't. Um, so they really have a provisioning. Um, Area with uh, with all of this uh, uh, closer uh, raw material and even though that that don't, didn't used, uh, that's not uh, the the representation that we could uh, we could uh, attempt. Uh, so also for the the upper Paleolithic, the presupposition don't fit. And now how we could interpret that? Because uh, uh, okay, Vincent, you, you spoke about uh, about network, and uh, and that's uh, a little uh, that, that John, you know, what you presented, and uh, here we we would like to to think, okay, maybe in this sort of network, uh, with uh, with this new result about uh, all the step of the chain of error to pair uh, raw material, we could maybe propose some roads, uh, not just. Uh, a flat area of provisioning, but really road. And that's very interesting because, as you say, we could now cross this idea of roads with uh, all the uh, topographics and hydrographics and really understand the provisioning strategy inside this, uh, this environment and not just have uh, on one side uh, the, uh, the, the distance <coughs> and the provisioning area and the other side have the uh, strategy of techno-economical strategy but really mix the both and understand inside the environment with all the topographics uh, why, where they passed and why. And um, actually uh, here I present three sites. It's just to, to tell you that it's not just one site and we have the provisioning strategy and we interpret just right now that we have some road there. No, actually we, we also cross the study with other, um, other sites, Abri Pateau, Camina, Roque de Combe, for example, from the same area and we look for each site of the Petro Techno-Economical um, uh, strategy and the uh, and, uh, and actually, uh, the, the, previous, uh, the previous site plateau that I present in detail is very representative of, uh, of, for the later recognition of this, uh, this strategy and, uh, and um, yeah, for this provisioning strategy. And uh, for here, yeah, we could also um, uh, propose some roads that's, uh, okay, first interpretation, because uh, it's, uh, it's a very unique site. Uh, there is not a lot of middle politic sites studied uh, now in the Massif Central with this result, but, uh, but 
even just with this result, we could uh, we could have new data and uh, so new interpretation about the uh, uh, raw material provisioning and strategy for the uh, uh, middle Paleolithic. Sorry. And uh, about the third presupposition about the typological area and the uh, provisioning area, I will present also Le Pigeonnier. Le Pigeonnier, actually, it's also later recognition, but um, unclear phases of later recognition. And uh, I, I, I told that because all the chain operatoire is not very, very well known. And so for this study, I just based um, on, the, on the study of a very typical um, typical tool, that's the Grattoir Caminade, like a schematic one, and here you have the variability of some, some of them. And actually, we, uh, we find these uh, tiny tools only here in, um, in the southwestern France. So that's all the sites, and so that's the, for, for instance, for, for now, that's the, the typological area that we know for these tools. And if we look at Le Pigeonnier, and if we look at the provisioning strategy, provisioning area, actually it's not at all uh, from this typological area. It's really uh, from the from the Charente and Charente Maritime and the Parisian Basin with the Grand Pretigny. And so that's also uh, a result that we didn't attempt. When we have uh, always this idea of, okay, we have a huge typological area, and inside this huge typological area, we will have uh, a small provisioning area, and we will cross with all sites to, uh, to have this idea of the network and the road. And, and now we have this result, and we think, okay, uh, what's, what's going on on this site? And um, actually, if we, if we look at um, Bombe Valley, uh, as I told you, that's a more Le Valois techno complex, and this techno complex is very well known in the southeastern France, uh, Mediterranean counter, and well, so the Rhone Valley. And, uh, and I present you a result. It's, uh, no, it's, uh, the, the raw material comes from the Parisian basin. So for the uh, middle Paleolithic, also, um, that don't fit, I mean, uh, uh, um, provisioning area and typological area don't fit. So what's going on there? And we we have imagined a sort of three uh, three interpretation. First one, we are uh, for example here in the Pigeonnier, and we are looking for uh, other materials. So uh, we will plan some specific expedition to uh, to have this raw material that we need, and. Um, <coughs> Actually, it's a little strange because they, if we look at the, 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 these tiny tools, they don't need really other raw material that, uh, that uh, they could have in the alluvium, the Dordogne, because there are Bergerac and other very good material here inside the, inside the typological area. So maybe, but that's not, uh, that's not the, the interpretation that we prefer. We could also imagine that we have here a true typological area with all this side and with, uh, with a specific group making this, uh, this uh, uh, grattoir cabinet. And maybe there is exchange of uh, raw material or anything. I give you some good raw material or just raw material. You, you give me something else in exchange, maybe not, uh, not uh, um, recognizable in archaeological record, but it could be uh, something like this. It could be one of the interpretation. And uh, actually, the, the true question we have, of course, is not uh, about archaeological and ethno-paleo-ethnological uh, ethno uh, interpretation, but more taphonomical interpretation. That um, uh, we, we think maybe there, there are some, some other sites, and actually, we miss something when we are just uh, uh, looking at all the sites we know, we already know, thinking, oh, okay, now we know we have this typological area. And sometimes it's a very short way to think this typological area, oh, yes, it's the cultural uh, area. Wow, maybe it's a, it's a too short way to think. And um, for example, here, if it is the, the Pigeonnier, for example, here we have Charente Maritime and Charente. And actually, it's a very flat geomorphology, no cave, no anything. So that's, uh, that's not at all the same record. So maybe actually there, there are some sites there. And uh, because of the geomorphological record, we don't find them. Or also because our uh, prehistorian record, we don't find them. Because actually, 
Um, okay, I, I think, of course, that the Dordogne was very famous because of the cave, because of the history of prehistory. And uh, uh, beside that, the Charente Maritime was a, a little bit just uh, uh, forget. And, uh, and I think that uh, we also missed some survey there in this area. So that's our, also our job to, uh, to, to be sure that when we talk <coughs> about uh, a typological area, it's not just uh, because it's just our, our point of view. And to conclude, actually, um, it's, uh, it's also a question about uh, prehistoric and prehistorian point of view. I mean, uh, for the first petroarchaeological study uh, in southwest and France, for example, it was based on the, on the survey of Pierre-Yves de Mars, who did a big, huge, and good job, because if he didn't, uh, I will present you now, oh, we have some Bergeracois in, uh, and now, of course, it's very well known, but OK, he did it. Um, but he, he, he did some uh, regional surveys. And what we have now, thanks to uh, Paul Fernandez and Vincent Delvigne and André Morala, is a, a very nice dynamic in France uh, with a collective uh, research project and, um, and to, to, okay, to, to cross all the results of all the prehistorian, uh, I mean, uh, for the, all the lithotech and the survey. And uh, now, if I am uh, studying a site there in Dordogne, I have the opportunity really to ask colleagues and to say, okay, maybe I don't want to, uh, I don't will to, um, to compare just with Pierre de Mars Lithotech, but with all the Lithotech in France. And now we have the tools. Uh, truly to, uh, to understand the, the long, uh, long provisioning, the far provisioning. So that's a uh, that's very, very nice dynamic. And also for the petro-techno-economical study, um, we now have uh, also a nice dynamic about methodology. Uh, that's not the point to, to, uh, to tell now that uh, the previous study, the mass, etc., that, uh, that was based only on macroscopic criteria, and maybe we could do better. So, okay, I, I hope uh, that, uh, that now we do better with, uh, uh, as I propose in my thesis, but also Vincent and, uh, and Erwan is the, his master degree and now his PhD and, and other colleagues. And um, to propose really to, uh, um, and first with this, with the, with the um, uh, sedimentary content studies, uh, to look at each single very piece of a uh, whole collection, even if it's, if it's uh, 30, 100, uh, 30,000 pieces, we will look at each every pieces with a binocular middle high magnification and, uh, and really to characterize everything inside these splints and, and to be sure not to say, oh, okay, the Grand Pressini is uh, reddish. I have a reddish material in the Dordogne. Oh, okay, maybe it's a 200 kilometer provisioning. No, no, really, we, we have a, a also this nice dynamic be because of the Lithoteca and the methodology, thanks to Paul Fernandez and, and previous, and, uh, to, uh, to go further with the, the determination. And, um, and more in the ethno, uh, ethnographical uh, interpretation that's a little bit presumptuous to the nature versus culture, but it's it just to, to, um, to have the debates because um, we have now a dynamic representation integrating the chain operatoire. And actually we could, pr we could propose some uh, network and, uh, and circulation roads. And uh, that's, uh, that's really what we would like to present <coughs> now, just not a, not to have just a small, uh, small line like this, but have really a dynamic understanding of the, the provisioning strategy. And uh, last, but not least, if it's the, the, the presupposition, uh, that's uh, all the middle Paleolithic and upper Paleolithic comparison was based also, of course, with, um, with this, uh, this uh, presupposition that we have that uh, there is something in the Middle Paleolithic uh, with, um, with Neanderthal and the Upper Paleolithic was defined by the modern human that coming <laughs> with the, uh, a nice uh, revolution, cultural revolution. And uh, thanks to previous study like uh, one from Francesco De Rico, Magbrosi de Lao and others, uh, we have evidence now of symbolic behavior before the early Paleolithic in Europe, 
in the in the middle Paleolithic. But we don't have uh, really evidence of persistence of this uh, this um, this behavior from the middle Paleolithic to the upper Paleolithic. And um, with the new result and uh, and the um, notably the, the result of um, Bomb Valley, we uh, we now have this uh, this proof that we have existence of network of raw material that not just very local and uh, and they they map on lo with uh, with local material, but there is this network that uh, that now we have a better understanding on, and um, maybe that's a, a proposition, but maybe it's based on this network that uh, that the modern human could go on on the on Europe. So. Uh, here we have not just punctual evidence of symbolisms, etc., but we have also and uh, and more actually because we have the um, the quotidian, <coughs> not just the punctual, but the the way of life in the um, day per day of the network, and uh, we we would like to to go on with this uh, hypothesis. So thank you.